Hi guys, welcome to Meditate and Heal. We are wrapping up our 30 day fight challenge. So we're gonna go over the takeaways that we got from this challenge. If you didn't get an opportunity to do this challenge, please go back and review my other videos. You can see my struggles, my vulnerability, and now, how I'm able to overcome those struggles. Let's get into it. I'm so excited because these are not just some principles that I came up with on my own to better my situation. These are godly principles. Nothing is more powerful than godly principles and following his way because he has the best way and he knows you like no other. We typically go through a lot of uh, the same kind of struggles, you know? It might be in different ways, but the bottom line is the same. It's very similar. These godly principles that I have written down to help deal with those struggles, uh, it's just, it's wonderful, it's great, it's God. So let's get into it. So the first principle that I wanted to go over was environment. When you're in a fight, your environment must be cleared out. You have to pay attention to um, your environment because if you think that you're going to get through a fight and not have the right environment, you're not going to get through that fight. And, and be successful, it's, it's not gonna work. You have to clear out your environment, okay? Okay, or clean it up, shall I say. But yeah, so let's get into it. Let's go over your environment. Your environment starts with people. First and foremost, it starts with people. We gotta, we gotta recognize the people that, that are in our life who are for us and who are against us and who are pretending to be for us and we have them around every day we have to recognize uh, the people that we allow in our life especially during our fight season especially during our fight season but period <laughs> we need to recognize the people that we keep close to us okay because they play a big part and delaying the process for your success and causing stress. Let's go over our environment. If you have people that are in your life that you, that you do not feel positive vibes and genuine support, you have to clear that out. If you're in a fight and you're trying to achieve a goal, a objective, you don't need negative vibes around you you need genuine support and positive vibes period okay <laughs> second if you feel like you're not getting the same respect in return people that you know start petty arguments pretending to to make up their own story about you they're just you know very messy <laughs> messy coming up with their own story about you putting it on you causing you to be stressed because now you feel like you got to defend yourself and it's like that's not who i am and you don't have time to be telling somebody about who you are whatever they want to believe about you let them have that okay you continue on fighting the good fight of faith and doing what you need to do. You need to get rid of that person because you don't have time for that. You're in a fight. Who has time for the petty argument? Someone telling you about you and it's not true. And they know the truth. They just doing that to irritate you, to get on your nerves, pretending like they didn't hear what you said, pretending like they don't know who you are just to get under your skin. For what reason? I don't know and I don't care. But however, it's not positive and I don't need it around me, right? You don't have time for the petty arguments, things like that. Next, people want to be in your presence because of your good energy. You know, 
they love they love your, the energy that you give off but they don't give good energy to you they only give you 30 percent just to keep you around you know just to hold on to some type of connection with you they're not for real about that energy that they that they giving you but they in love with your energy then because you give off positive energy you know how to talk to people you are respectful loving caring godly these people are not they want to take from you and only give you a little just to hold on to your good energy while pulling you down get rid of those people it's bad for the environment it's bad for the fight um, let's keep going your time is precious you can't get your time back okay your time is very precious and if you're spending a lot of time talking to these people on the phone if you think like me i'm a girl like if i have a friend i love to talk to my friends on the phone like i love to go into some conversation like i like to talk but if i'm talking to you every day and you don't have good vibes or you always doing this like sneak dissing I'm not really being supportive, only talking about yourself. Don't never ask about how you are doing. They have your own made up story and thought about you because they feel like they know you for a long time or whatever the case may be. Like I said, who cares the reasons behind people do what they do? We just see that they're doing it, especially when it's negative and it's not good for the environment. Okay. Put that down in the comments. Not good <laughs> for the environment. Not good for the fight. All right. If you're talking to them on the phone daily, you need to cut that out. Cut it out. You're in a fight. Cut it out. They're not giving you the same energy, the same respect, the same love that you're giving them. You don't feel that, do you? No. So if you don't feel it, don't waste your time with it. If you didn't already express to someone how to treat you and they choose to ignore it and still treat you disrespectfully, then okay. Then you is now the ball is in your go in your court. You have the power to get rid of that person. That's in your hands. You don't have to keep allowing this person to mistreat you let it go you'll be all right you know you're making room for more friends better opportunities and a easier fight you can focus better on your objective because you don't have to worry about i'm up you know stressed out and upset because this person always got something negative to say you know they ain't they ain't doing me right and those people trust and believe they know how to treat people because you seen with your own eyes that how they treat other people. So why they can't extend that same love and respect to you? Whatever reason it is that they can't do that for you, fine and good, but you don't need to have them around you, okay? But you know that they are capable of extending good love, good energy, and respectfulness to someone else they just can't do it for you and whatever reason that they can't do it for you oh well don't waste your time and your energy trying to figure out why they why they can't love me the way they love somebody else who cares okay you gotta fight to overcome you got things to do and if they ain't down for the cause if they ain't down for you then they gotta go let them go love and support whoever they want to go love and support. You focus on you. You stay in the fight, right? Next. And don't feel bad for saying no. Don't feel bad for saying no. Because guess what? They don't feel bad for um, treating you how they treat you. Obviously, if they keep doing it over and over and over. They don't have no guilt about it. They don't feel no type of way about treating you the way that they treat you. So why should you feel bad for 
um, saying no to them. They don't care about you. Why you feel bad for saying no to them? Okay? So don't feel bad when you have to say no when you can't get on the phone. You know, you can't go to places that they want you to go to. You're not doing the things that you want, that they want you to do. Because you are in a fight. You have things to do and they don't, they don't really support you no way. So don't feel bad for saying no. And quite frankly, just get them out of your environment. It's bad for your growth. It's bad for your progress. Keep it moving, you know? Hate to be like that, but you know, it's just, it is what it is. People will make you say, you know what? I can't deal with you anymore. You're bad for my growth. <laughs> You're bad for the process. <laughs> so it is what it is. So whatever you can learn from that situation, take it and learn and get rid of the bad apple. Take what you can, can from the experience with that person the relationship with that person and you know take the lesson because it's always a lesson in negativity in trials and tribulations so take the lesson and keep it moving okay and get rid of the bad apple you need a clean environment when you're in a fight you need a clear mindset you need a focused mindset and having those kind of people around you is going to take from your mind it's going to take from you being focused and dedicated to your work to your to your truth to your passion it's going to take away from all that you don't need that it's in the way you don't need it okay so please by any means necessary keep your environment clean keep it clean get rid of the bad apples all right when they show it to you believe them and get rid of it it's not helping your growth you're in a fight you have things to do time is valuable i cannot stress this enough and i hate to keep going over and over and over but you have to understand that how how important your environment is for you to flourish you need a clean environment okay for you to grow period you need that you can't it's it's time is precious those people are taking away from your time taking your time away from your vision okay they're not worth your vision nobody is worth your vision that's your god-given vision nobody is worth it let it go let it go okay next is your time with God, okay? Your time with God is very important with the, when you're in a fight. How to spend more time with God? Lay off social media. That time that you spend on social media, replace that with spending time with God. Read your Bible, write in your journal, read some self-help books, get a closer relationship with god that way you will receive his wisdom you will become more confident in the things that you are doing okay and you are protected time with god is very very important okay so that time that you were spending with corrupted friends so-called friends and on social media watching entertainment all day or a good portion of your day you could be listening to the bible app you could be praying you could be meditating you could be like i said writing in your journal allowing god to speak to you writing down what he said as you're spending time with god your values will start to change okay your standards will start to change. Your principles will start to change. It will go from your own mindset and the mindset that you gain from the world to godly principles and God's way. So the more time you spend with God, you are getting away from old habits, 
old principles and gaining God's principles in God's way, okay? And his way is what's going to remove mountains and barriers, okay? His way is going to give you strength and power to overcome your situation, to help you with your fight when you gain more of God's principle versus the world's principles, okay? It's going to heighten your discernment. So you'll know when God is talking to you. When God is sending you signs, you'll be able to take heed of that much quicker because you're spending more time with him, right? That is everything. That's everything. Now you're getting a better understanding of your situation because you're spending more time with God. If you're not spending time with God, you're going to lose sight of the principles that's going to help you to get through your circumstance, okay? Spend as much time as possible with God because that is where your help is going to come from, all right? That is where your wisdom is going to come from. That is where your joy and your peace is going to come from. It's not going to come from the world. So spend more time with God, okay? And God may not remove these barriers, but he is going to help you overcome it. He is going to help you get through it. And sometimes he will remove it. Sometimes he would just completely remove it. And sometimes he's going to take you through. But whatever it is, it's God's way. And it's, it's more helpful to your situation and to your growth and to your character. And whatever it is that you're trying to do. Godly principles. God's way. So get closer to him. So you can figure this thing out and you can gain a more solid foundation, right? On how to do things and how to be still uh, when, you're when you're going through, okay? To be still and allow God to help you so that you don't have to carry all that weight and pressure on yourself, right? So a close relationship with God is needed when you're in a fight. You have to get close with God. And I started off with no social media at night and no social social media when I wake up in the morning. Spend time with God first. And then before I go to bed, spend time with God. And even throughout my day, you know, but it depends on what stage you, you in. You know, sometimes when you first starting out to spend time with God, it could be difficult because you're not used to sitting down reading your Bible. You're not used to reading, you know, writing in your journal, listening to gospel music and things like that. So you might don't, you know, do it throughout the day, but do try to make a point to do it first thing in the morning and before you go to bed at night, you can start there and then you know, increase your time with God as you go on. And I'm telling you, as you go on to spend time with God, you're going to continue to want to spend time with him. You're going to want to be up under him all the time because you're going to feel his presence. And his presence, like I said, that's where the joy, the peace, the strength, the wisdom is. So it's going to get stronger and stronger. As you discipline yourself, to spend more time with him, after a while, you're going to be all up under God because his presence is like no other. His wisdom is like no other. His love is like no other. And so I know when I'm feeling down, turning my gospel music on, listening uh, to a word, it always get me back together. It always get me right back together. And sometimes I forget. I forget like that I have a, a God that is there for me. But God don't forget about me. And guess what? He sends me a sign. 
he show me some love. I be in awe because I'm like, oh, I needed that God. That was so on time. And sometimes, like I said, you might not run to him, but he, he will give to you. The more you abide in him, he will abide in you. So even if you forget, even if you like, you're so stressed out that you forget to abide in God, the more you do it, God is not going to let you get so stressed out. He's going to send you a sign. He's going to speak to you. He's going to put place something in your in your heart, in your spirit, in your knowing that's going to help with that stress. So even if you don't write to him all the time, trust me, he got your back. He got your back. He's not going to allow you to keep, you know, with keep going on with that negative mindset. He's going to do something to get your attention, to give you an understanding of what it is that's going on or to help you cope with your situation or to get through your situation, okay? I know that when I'm in my struggle, when I was in the 30-day challenge, God kept telling me over and over that I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you in all different kinds of ways. He kept saying that, but mainly I kept hearing it in my spirit that I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. I'm like, God, you keep telling me that. I'm about to cry now because I'm like, God, you keep telling me that. And it's, and it's like, he's just letting you know I'm with you. And by him letting me know that, it gave me the strength to keep going because God kept telling me, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. I mean, he kept saying over and over that. I mean, I'm, I'm going through my struggle, but God just keep repeating to me over and over, and I can't let it go. It's like a voice in my head that keeps telling me that he's with me, he's with me, he's with me, he's with me. And it makes me stronger, and it allows me to get through the fight. So, abide in God, and he will abide in you, okay? Dwell in the Lord, in other words. Dwell in the Lord and he will dwell in you. Spend time with God and he will make sure that you get the words that you need, the direction that you need, whatever it is that you need to get through that moment, to get through that hard time, that struggling time. He's going to get your attention and you're going to know that that's God because of the amount of time that you spend with him. Like I said, now your discernment is starting to heighten. You're starting to recognize more and more God's voice. Okay? Shut out the noise. Any distractions that may be causing you to stop getting closer to God, turn the distractions off. Turn it off. Clean up the environment. Turn off the social media. Use that time to spend time with God so you can get the receipt, so you can get the joy, the strength, the wisdom that you need to grow and to get through your fight, okay? The more you spend time with God, the better off you'll be. Trust me. These people don't love you the way that God loves you, okay? They don't. It is what it is. Just because you can see them doesn't mean that they love you the more than the the more than God because you can't see God. You can't see God, but you can feel his presence. And that that presence is real, baby. It is real than all get out real. You know, it's more real than what you can see in the physical. Okay? So get under God's presence, shut out the noise from whatever that may be for you, whatever is holding your attention all the time and it's really not doing anything for you. Um, everything in moderation. Spend that time with God. That's where your help is going to come from, okay? That is where your direction is going to come from. You in a fight? You need direction. 
okay? And God will be your daily director if you allow him to be. He will be your daily help if you call on him, okay? And the more you get close to him, the more he's going to get close to you, all right? So, you know, this fight that, that we're in, we're not in it alone. And even when we, you know, forget to call on Jesus because we get so caught up in the fight, he's going to reach out and touch us. He's going to reach out and, and show you that he's here for you and give you a right on time message or a right on time understanding. Whatever you need at that moment, he's going to give it to you. Even if you didn't call out on him because you've been calling out on him faithfully and daily. So in little teeny moments where you forget to do that, guess what? He's going to come to you and say, hey, pick your head up. Pick your head up. I'm with you. That's what he kept telling me. I'm with you. Or like I said, whatever it is that you need at the time, he will deliver just that. Okay? Balance. We're in a fight. We're working hard, right? Get your rest. Have balance. All work and no play is not good. <laughs> it's not good for your mental. Okay? It's not good for your body. If your body tell you you need rest, listen to your body and take the rest, okay? Trust in the work that you have already done and know that it is adding up. It is adding up and it's going to have an impact on your end goal. The work that you do daily, the efforts that you put in daily is all adding up to the end goal. And it's okay to take breaks in between and rest and take a day off. Have balance, okay? This is just a sidebar, I guess. So I also want to say this. If your family members, you know, can be a distraction a lot of times, you know, especially, if, you know, you got a big family or even if you got a little family, people in your house, period, can take your time away from your fight, your focus, right? So if you didn't already gave to your family, you didn't already took care of your family for today, it's okay, and they still, you know, worrying you, asking more from you, it's okay to tell them, look, right now, this is my time. I didn't already gave to you today and I will finish giving myself to you when I'm done. But right now, let me have my time, please. Give me that, <laughs> okay? You gotta be vocal about the things that you want because if not, people will run over you. And even if they not, like your family, like the people in your household, you know, your husband, your kids, or whatever have you, um, even if they doesn't do it intentionally. But don't feel bad for doing that as well because you're only one person, okay? And you have a fight to overcome. You have something that you're trying to gain, something that you're trying to work on. And so you just got to let them know that this is your time to do you. Balance. Rest when you need to rest. Work hard. Play hard. Okay, that's important because, you know, overworking yourself is stressful and it could cause depression for real, for real. Like, I know when I overwork myself, I get depressed because <laughs> I feel like I don't have a life. You know, I'm not, you know, everything that I'm doing is just, you know, for this particular thing or for everything else besides fun, you know. And it's good that you're working your butt off, but at the same time, you gotta have a little fun as well. You gotta have some fun. You gotta throw in some spice, you know, have fun. So you don't get depressed and get stressed out and feel like you don't have no 
fun happening in your life. You know, you just work, 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 work. And that's why it's important to also, you know, do the work that you love because we spend a lot of our time working. So um, that's why, you know, going after your passion, you know, doing things, you know, that is within your talents is wonderful because we do that a lot. We want that to be enjoyable as well. But sometimes we need a break from that too and really just re release relax and let go right so have balance next guys when you're in a fight confusion attacks and distractions come trust and believe the devil sees you working on something and he comes to what they say, what they say in the Bible, he comes to steal and destroy. Okay, so once he see you focusing on something, there will be confusion and distractions. And so if you clean up your environment, you don't have to worry about him using people to get on your nerves because you don't have nobody in your circle. It's just you, right? Or, you know, you only keep really good people in your, in your circle. And you know who those people are. You can tell. You can feel real love when it's real. And when it's not, like I said, don't ignore the red flags. But that's why it's important to have your cl a clean environment. Because God, I mean, the devil will use those people to get on your nerves. To be a form of distractions. To attack you. And to cause confusion. So, clean up your environment so that's you ain't got to worry about him using those people to get on your nerves. He'll use family members to get on your nerves. So, be careful, you know, with that. Loved ones to get on your nerves and to distract you and all those things. Things. So, when you want to, if you already, what do you say? If you stay ready, then you don't have to get ready. So, if you know that, okay. I'm about to start working on something. Also know that it's about to be, you about to get attacked. <laughs> it's about to be some confusion, some distraction, some things that's going to delay the situation, whatever, you know, it may be. But understand that that's coming as well. So when it comes, you're not totally shocked. You're like, okay, I know what this is. I know what this is. So, being that you know what that is, be still, let God. Be still and let God. Be careful of the words that you say out of your mouth during these times of confusion and attacks. You know, be very careful what you say out of your mouth. Try to say less as possible because the less you say, the more that God can do, right? So, pull yourself back. Reframe yourself from responding so quickly to attacks and confusion and distractions. That way it gives God an opportunity to step in on your behalf and handle the situation for you. Because you're not in this fight alone. The battle is not all yours. You got help. Okay? The more you spend time with God, the more he's going to spend time with you. So he's going to protect you at all costs. When those things come against you, try to stay calm and allow God to fight for you, okay? Allow him to fight for you. He knows what he's doing, you know? You're going to come up on top. You're going to come up on top. At the end of the day, you're going to win. You, If you keep your mouth closed and if you allow God to go ahead of you, you're going to come out on top. All right, so when confusion attacks come, let God handle that. Let him handle it. Give it to the Lord. Pray about it. Okay? Give it to him. He's there. He's with you. He's with you. He's with you. And I keep re repeating that over and over because that's what he kept telling me. I'm with you. I'm with you. So if he's with you, he has your back. Okay? He's going to fight for you. And so you don't have to say or do much against a fight or a confusion or attack. Let the Lord handle it. 
okay? And you stay focused. You stay focused. You pray about it. You write in your journal about it. And as you write in your journal, God will tell you, you know, how you should react. And you do just that. As you pray about it, God will send you answers to your prayers on how to deal with your attack. And if he don't say nothing, you don't do nothing. Let him fight it. He got it. He got it. You can trust and believe that he got it. 10 out of 10, it always works out for your good. 10 out of 10, it works out for your good. Like, <laughs> you ain't have to do nothing. Okay? So, let, let, let the devil fight with God. Then you stay out of it. Okay? <laughs> you stay out of it. Let the devil fight with God. All right? I'm going to stay out of it. Okay? The Lord will tell you what you need to do. He will speak to you. He will show you. The more you spend time with him, the closer he will get to you. And the closer he will get to your situation. And he will work it out for your good. So you don't have to worry about dealing with attacks and confusion. Let God deal with it. Okay? Next, trust yourself. And the reason why that you can trust yourself is because of who lives within you. Because the Holy Spirit lives within you, you can trust yourself. Okay? If he's if he lives within you and you are allowing him to work through you, then you can trust yourself. You can trust what he puts in your spirit. Okay? You can trust the works of your hands. Because you are spending time with God. You are activating the Holy Spirit. The more time you spend with God, the more time you are activating the Holy Spirit. You are allowing the Holy Spirit to work through you. Okay? From the inside out. All right? So, therefore, you can trust yourself because you are trusting the Holy Spirit that lives within you. All right? And you start by spending time with God. So, yeah, trust yourself. Trust yourself. You're right. You're right. You're right because the Holy Spirit is right. And the Holy Spirit lives within you. And he's abiding in you. So, you're right. You can trust yourself. You got this. When it gets hard, pray. Turn on your gospel music. Get in God's presence. When it gets hard, get in God's presence. Okay? In God's presence is the answers that you need to get through your hard times. Okay? In God's presence is his unfailing love. It's his protection. So get in his presence. When it gets hard, Get in God's presence. Get in his presence. Also, perform your job well or, you know, whatever you're doing. And you're starting a business or you're at work. Do your job well. Doing your job well. Don't, don't have stuff. Do it the right way. Do your job well, be polite, assist someone else. All those things are going to help you get through your hard times. Focus on somebody else. Focus on the good. You know, don't dwell in that, in that sadness, in that disappointment. You know, deal with it. Whatever you're going through, that's it. <laughs> like, it, like, you know, it's not going to pass. It is going to pass. It is going to pass. So don't sit and dwell in that sadness. Deal with it. And move on. Do something to make someone else happy. Okay? Do your job well. Listen to your gospel music. Um, give God praise. Write in your journal. When it gets hard, 
get in God's presence. Get in his presence. You're in a fight, right? Get in God's presence. Next, stay focused on the vision. Okay, so God tell us to write our vision down, make it plain so you'll know how to run with it. So when you lose sight of your vision because you got caught up looking at the world or you got caught up, you know, um, doubting yourself for whatever reason, go back to your vision that you wrote down. Go back to your vision that you wrote down, read it, meditate on it, stay on track. All right, so if you lose sight of the vision, have your vision written down so that you can always go back to it and you can gain your vision, your sight back so you'll know what you're doing, how to walk, how to move. This challenge is going to help you to release bad characteristics and pick up godly characteristics. It's going to raise your standards. It's going to help you uh, stop fighting or wrestling with your flesh. The Bible tells us that we should flee away from sin. So when our flesh wants to do something, and we know that this is not godly, this is not the way, then we just automatically should just run for, from it. Like, don't even think about it. Don't even contemplate it. Run from it. Just run. <laughs> Run the other way, okay, with the quickness. You know, having a fight challenge is going to help you to hold yourself accountable. When you know that you're in a challenge, then you you try to do well, right? Because you're trying to achieve your challenge, right? So I want to drink a gallon, of, not a gallon, a half gallon. I'm going to start there first. Baby steps, right? But anyway, I'm drinking a half a gallon of water every day. I'm challenging myself to do that. I bought a half gallon of a water bottle. Now, if I didn't have, if I didn't if put myself in a challenge, then I probably would forget that I'm doing the challenge and, you know, then I'm not bettering myself. So having the challenge is going to help you to remember, hey, you know, I'm fighting against my flesh. So when I want to do something that I'm not supposed to be doing, I need to run away from that, right? The more you feed your flesh, then that's who you will become, right? We don't want to keep giving to our flesh because we don't want to become that, right? When that sin come about and those fleshly ways come about, it's important that we run. And this challenge, having a challenge, having, you know, something set in place that's going to help you to flee from sin is good, you know. So that's what this challenge is going to help you to do. And it don't have to be a 30-day challenge. You know, I just did that to, you know, to help you start somewhere, to start the process, um, to make it interesting. Start off for 30 days. They you know, and then eventually it will become a habit. And, you know, you'll just keep going. So, yeah. Run away from sin. It's not helping you. You don't want to become more sinful. And try to run away from it. Because the more you feed into it, then, you know, you just, it, the harder it is to stop sinning. So, yeah. Run from your sin, guys. Next is to never give up. Please do not give up on yourself. Okay? Don't give up on yourself. And the more time you spend time with God, look, everything goes back to spending time with God. The more time you spend with God, it's going to be hard for you to give up. So, yeah. But don't give up. If you give up, you'll never get there, okay? Die trying. <laughs> never give up, all right? Uh, fight the good fight of faith, and God will redeem you. And remember, your passion, your vision is worth fighting for, okay? Anything that is worth having is worth fighting for. 
So please do not give up, okay? Even if you have to drag yourself, all right, to the finish line, don't give up, okay? You even like literally you have to pull yourself out of the bed and force yourself to focus. Don't give up. Like I said, those, I'm sorry, I'm kicking the, the, the stand. Those little things that you did today it's going to better your tomorrow. So even if you had to drag yourself to do those little things, it's going to help your tomorrow. So don't give up, all right? The work that you do is adding up. Even if you got to drag yourself to put some clothes on, don't give up. And God, like I said, God is not going to allow you to give up. It's going to be a pull on you to not give up. Even if you wanted to, it's like he's not going to allow you to. So, keep going. You'll never get there if you stop. And a lot of times, a lot of times, if not all, there is purpose in your setbacks. So, God is training you up. He is cleaning you out. And he is using the setbacks to grow you. He's using your setbacks to grow you, to improve you, to purify you. So um, take, take the lesson, take the lesson from the setback and keep pushing, all right? You'll understand more and more the purpose of your setback, okay? Take that and learn from it. Use it. And lastly, progress is not possible without change. Be grateful for everything that God has done for you. For you are not alone and he is upholding you. Your situation, it could be worse. You're not the same person you used to be. You're elevating in your character and your situation. And you are blessed. All right. So that brings me to the end of this video. Those are our takeaways from the fight, from the 30 day fight challenge. And of course, I'm going to keep fighting because the fight really goes on and on and on. You guys keep doing what you need to do to get through. Take these principles, these godly principles and run with it. So until next time, be blessed and trust and believe God got you all the time. Take care.